Welcome to Mother Daughter Projects, I'm Steph. We've made a series of videos all about this DIY trailer kit from Harbor Freight. Today we're going to install the deck or bed of the trailer and experiment with a back-end rail idea. For the deck, we're using a 4 by 8 foot sheet of pressure treated plywood from the Home Depot. We got it cut exactly in half at the store as each section of the trailer is 4 by 4. You'll notice each corner of the trailer has a bolt head sticking out. We have two ideas to deal with this. One is just to cut a corner of the plywood off of these spots, or another idea is to make an addition on the bottom side of the plywood to account for the bolt head, which we're doing here. Mom made a paper template of where the bolt head is placed, marked it on the plywood, and I use a forstner bit to remove the plywood in these sections. We put each piece in place to test the fit. We had to make a little bit of adjustments, but we were able to get it to fit. Next, the hinge that allows the trailer to fold is in the way just a little bit so the plywood can't fit underneath. So I marked a little indention on the plywood and I cut it out with a multi-tool. Next, I got under the trailer to mark each hole for where the plywood will attach to the trailer frame. In order to get a good marking, I cut a pencil short to fit into the rail. The hardware we're going to use to attach the plywood to the frame are 3 8 inch carriage bolts, lock washers, and hex nuts. We got galvanized as this will be stored outside and want to help prevent rust. We drilled 3 8 inch holes in all the spots and Mom cleaned that up with a sander. Then we placed the carriage bolts in each hole. Then we put it on the frame. It was difficult to get them through the hole, so we clamped the plywood to the frame and lifted up the back half so we could attach the lock washers and nuts. You can see we're using a hand ratcheting wrench to attach these and this proved to be very time consuming. The reason we went with carriage bolts is they have a square neck that resists turning when fastened into place. So what we're doing here is allowing the carriage bolts to make an indention into the plywood, thus holding it better and making it more secure. The day before we did this, I happened to notice that Ryobi had just come out with a cordless ratcheting wrench, so we headed to Home Depot to buy one to try on the second half of the trailer. We propped up the trailer so I could mark the holes on the plywood, then I followed the same process of drilling 3 8 inch holes through the plywood. This time Mom cleaned up the holes with a rotary tool and we put the plywood back in place, adding the carriage bolts, clamped it, and lifted it so I could add the nuts. And a shout out to my dad for helping with some of the heavy lifting here. This Ryobi cordless ratcheting wrench was a game changer. It made it so much easier to secure the carriage bolts into the plywood. With that done in less than half the time of the first one, we put the trailer back into place and customized it a little bit by giving it a name. And yes, this will be referred to as the Great Trailer, which is a nod to my two greyhounds. So here's a look at it all done. After a few weeks, there were two concerns I had about this. One, the bolt sticking up just a little bit, and two, I wanted to seal the plywood so it extends the life. So it was back under the trailer for me, but this time we invested in a creeper from Harbor Freight. This made it so easy to get under the trailer and to move all around with ease. And again, the cordless ratchet made this really, really easy and fast. With the plywood removed, I placed it on the ground and again, used the Forstner bit to drill into each screw hole. To make sure they were nice and straight, I'm using the Rockler drill press attachment, which has stops so I was able to get the same depth on every hole. Next, Mom stained the wood. This is leftover Olympic solid stain that we used on my outdoor furniture a year ago. Now this was a few weeks after we had purchased the pressure treated plywood, so it had plenty of time to dry out before staining. When you purchase pressure treated wood, you can feel that it's damp from the chemicals that they use and it needs time to dry out before painting or staining. Mom stained both pieces of plywood front and back so we had no issues with warping. Again, we waited a few weeks before we put it back under the trailer because we wanted to make sure it was nice and dry. We just repeated the process for getting the plywood back on the trailer. One thing you'll notice is we struggled a little bit to get the bolts back into the back end of the trailer. But when we put the bolts back into the front end of the trailer, they dropped in very easily. 
So there could be two reasons for this. One, mom used the rotary tool to clean up the holes in the front part of the trailer, or two, we used the ratcheting wrench on this section. Whichever it was, I would recommend doing both of these on your trailer. Again, the creeper made this easy to get under the trailer and the ratcheting wrench made quick work of reattaching the plywood. Now, we have been asked why we didn't add wood rails all around the trailer, and our answer is because we don't know exactly what type would be best for how we're gonna use the trailer in the future. I've been looking at a lot of different trailer wall ideas and also spotted some ideas of trailer walls I see on the road. But the main reason we got this trailer is to haul lumber from the hardware store, mainly 4x8 sheets of plywood. So we decided to start with just the back rail for the trailer, and if we see the need in the future, then we'll make the other three sides. We bought a 2x6 8 foot board and cut it in half. Then we added two 2x4s into the brackets on the back of the trailer and glued and screwed the top 2x6 into place, then did the same with the bottom. The space between the bottom 2x6 and the plywood bed is the same thickness of three sheets of 3 4 inch plywood. As this is how many sheets of plywood we think we'd get at one time. For some reason, the brackets on this trailer are just a little too small to fit easily a 2x4 into. So I measured the height of the bracket, and then I cut a little indention out on each of the 2x4 so it will fit easily into the brackets. Then I drilled a hole for the hardware to secure it to the trailer. And if you're wondering, we didn't go with pressure treated wood for this section because we don't intend to use this piece all the time and it will be stored indoors. But we did paint it with an outdoor paint that we had left over from painting my house and mom's mailbox. Lastly, I used the ratcheting wrench to secure the rail to the trailer. We used bolts we already had on hand. What we learned. So now that we've done this, I would definitely recommend sealing the wood and countersinking the bolts. I feel like that's gonna make this last even longer. And the tools I'd recommend are definitely that Ryobi cordless ratchet. Uh, there's many other brands that make those. Uh, we've been happy with the Ryobi so far. It feels really well made and it's just performed perfect for us. Um, and that creeper, that is definitely a tool that I'm so glad we got. That allows me to get under this trailer really easily, really comfortable. Um, and I'll be using it again in the future because every time I fold this trailer, I have to get to those bolts underneath. So that will be uh, the perfect tool for that. Um, and also we didn't talk about this, but the trailer jack, we actually added that to the front of this trailer here. And that we picked up at Harbor Freight. And it's great because we're able to get the trailer to be a consistent height and not have to put something under the, the nose of the trailer when it's not uh, attached to a car. Again, like we mentioned, we only made the back rails for the trailer because we're not sure how we're gonna use this trailer in the future. But if we do decide on a different design or desi decide to make a full full rails for this, we'll definitely share that in the future. So if you like this video, please give us a big thumbs up and I'll put a link below to all the other videos in the trailer series and we have a couple more coming up for you. Um, if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye!